Hello, everybody. Welcome to TechEd. No, we are not in North America. TechEd <laughs> Europe. Hola. Uh, you want to start? Yes, we can start. OK. If everybody is ready, let's start the session. I hope it's going to be a good session. We prepared good materials for you. And I promise a few people from the room that I know it's going to be really good. Otherwise, feel free to come and hit me after the session. OK. On. What's next? Before we start with the session, my name is Arda Loskaya. I am the regional director for Camp Technologies in Australia, New Zealand. So I'm from Australia. I'm a Windows expert, MVP, since 2009. I teach many hacking classes. I speak in many conferences. I don't know if you heard about certified ethical hacking uh, by EC Council. I won the award for the last two years as global instructor of the year. I'm also teaching many Microsoft classes. I used to be. Now I'm at camp focusing on uh, load balancing. And Raymond? Well, my name is Raymond Convalius. I'm an MVP from the Netherlands. I uh, do consulting since 1998 as an uh, independent. Do a lot of uh, new implementations of Windows Client, Windows Server, and all other Microsoft stuff. I'm also an author. I became an author kind of by accident. My first book is not on this slide. It's Windows Vista for XP professionals. <laughs> Probably, well, let's skip that mistake. Um, after that, I wrote Windows 7 for XP professionals, which was kind of successful. It's not even available anymore now, I think. Um, I also write a blog, and sometimes I write uh, on Bing.new. OK, let's start with the session. Um, why did we create this session? This is because we noticed that a lot of people have issues when they notice that something is going wrong with their systems, and apparently some kind of bad software is going on in the system. We're looking at how to look for the weaknesses. How do you get hacked or owned? And what actions do you take to make sure that it doesn't happen again and that you get rid of what happened to you? Oh, do you got anybody who never had a virus issue or a compromise issue? Anybody? One hand? One. There's one well, over you know, Really? So do you got a computer? <laughs> do you got a computer? OK, good. So nobody wants to get hacked, right? Uh, we know that, especially these days, it used to be Security news, very rare in the newspapers. But these days, security news are more and more newspapers, and we're starting to hit the headlines. Um, you notice, like, a 20 years old Romanian hacker was powerful enough to hack NASA. NASA? These guys are fly all the way to Mars, take pictures, send it to us here, but they couldn't protect their own system. Or more recently, do you know this guy? Yeah? Look at this. He's one of the biggest in turn he this guy was leaking one of the biggest leaks in the history, US history. So sometimes it's not the virus is not the software, it's the human itself. So what can you do to protect against these issues? You see the news, you will see the malware, the hacking incidents, the data breach investigations getting higher and higher and higher. You will see that there are very little environmental factors, little bit human errors, but lots of hacking, lots of social engineering, and as a result, the cost is getting higher and higher and higher. And if you check the downtime time, the, the, the cost of these incidents, besides of you staying sleepless, it's getting higher. So what can we do? The question is, who thinks security is not part of your job? Is there anybody who says, you know what, security is not part of my job? Anybody says yes? Doesn't matter if you're an end user, an IT pro, or you are using computer or not. I think security is part of our life. And the question is, how safe is your computer? So, actually, your computer is never really, really safe. Uh, I compare it to uh, bike stealing in the Netherlands. If you have a bike in the Netherlands, your bike 
will get stolen if a thief wants to steal your bike. You can buy a lock this big. If the thief takes the time, he will steal your bike. So it's the same with your, your computer system. You can take me measurements however you like. If a hacker really wants to hack your system, your system is his. That doesn't take away that you have to take measures. But those, th those measures will always be like what you have to protect has a value and you can take your measurements and you have to take in account how many measurements do you take, what will it cost and what will it, what will it protect you from. So, of course, there is a lot of reasons not to protect your systems or not to take certain measurements because some people may say it costs too much money. Then it's up to you to make, to make up the, the account and tell, well, if we get hacked, how much is it going to cost us? How much money are we losing? Is it complicated? Well, sometimes it is. This Friday, we will be doing a session on user account control. And user account control is kind of complicating stuff for users. Is it so complicated that you have to turn it off? Well, maybe. Maybe not. Still, a lot of people think it's not worth the bother to think about security because they don't have anything to lose. Well, <coughs> sometimes you do. And it's not only your simple firewall that will take care of it. All right, do you remember the olden days? We used to tell, I mean, I'm security, I'm in the security field for many, many years now. And then I first started, the best practice was, you know what? You need one firewall in front of your modem, one firewall after the modem, you got your DMZ area, and you put another six firewalls, all different brands, and you protect it. Is this still valid these days? Who's not using port 80? A simple port which has the golden key, right? So sometimes the solution is not a solution. So having the fear, oh, Mr. Hacker, I'm scared, please don't hack me. Or, oh, I'm confused, maybe I will not get hacked. Your hope is not going to help you. So what can we do? It's start to look for weaknesses. I mean, if you consider yourself an IT professional, you should now start to look for weaknesses. I always give this example before I hand it back the microphone to Red, uh, Raymond. <laughs> do you remember Rocky Balboa? when he was uh, boxing against that Russian guy in, uh, Ram, uh, in Rocky. Rocky, Rocky. Yeah. You know, the Russian guy noticed that Ro uh, Rocky had um, some issues with his ribs. He started to attack from there. Why? Because he discovered the vulnerability. And as a result, uh, Rocky was losing some points. Anyway, Raymond? So we have to look for weaknesses. We may think that we have everything in up in order and have everything uh, protected. Still, it's a true picture. There might be ways around it. Check this picture. You should not come uh, into this area, but you can get around it very easy. Same is for when you're visiting websites. When you're visiting websites, it's just about keeping an eye on what you're doing. You see in this, this line, on top of the, the website, it's saying something. You can ignore it, or you can just watch it and see what it's about. And it's, it's telling you that something is going wrong. And it's too often that people are just ignoring these, these, these signs that are telling them something is going wrong. Or this is an example that I've met at many customers of mine. This is in Sydney. I'm delivering a class for Microsoft and full of people, okay, in a hotel. I noticed this photo. I blew it myself, but look carefully, please. This is Wollongong City Council, okay? A city council at um, Sydney. And look at this, the password is in the laptop. You might say, who cares? It is a, uh, you know, laptop for when you're away. But this laptop is going to give back to your environment, right? I can plant a rootkit here. And this rootkit can just go through your network systems. Okay, what's next? Social networks. This is the one that tricked 
me and not only me. It tricked the CIO of the company that I was working with for about a year ago. It tricked my cousin last week. It tricked my wife last week <laughs> on Facebook. Thinking that you can trust someone that's sending, it's, it's thinking that you can trust someone who seems to send you a message. This was the message. Well, we, we tried to download this virus. It's gone already, but somebody seems to send you a message. And as long as you think, well, it's just a friend. What's going wrong? Well, it can steal your identity on some network. And when your identity is already stolen, then you might have an issue. The photo on the right. I took this photo again. These guys, I don't know if you notice, has an alarm there, but they think they're getting more secure while using a lock chain there. Interesting. So uh, it, it's clear not a good idea, right? Or this gentleman on my flight to God knows where <laughs> was just typing something in his computer. What I could do is basically with my 16 megapixel camera, I could just zoom in to his document, and I wish this session was not recorded. I could show you what was on that document. It was a top <laughs> secret document, and the guy was generous enough to share it with me. Shoulder surfing. Who never done it? Honestly. I think we all done it, right? When people type passwords, looking from the behind, and try to get information. Or this is a live screenshot from a bank. Which, which people were stealing information. So sometimes things might go wrong, but we don't expect it. We might trust the location where we're at. We might trust our surroundings for some reasons that are not really the right re reasons. This is what happened to, to Erdl on one of his flights. He was sitting next to a lady, and she left to pay a visit to the, to, to the ladies' room. And she asked him to watch his bag, eh? watch her bag. Eh? Now, he could do anything with what was in her bag. She could get in real, real, real big trouble when she arrived at the next airport to find out that her passport was no right. longer there. Like this gentleman, he's just doing a check-in at the moment. What I've done is just walk behind him and do, watching what he's doing. I mean, three people caught me there. This is very life scenario. You will see people right inside you, and they will look in your screens. I mean, luckily he wasn't doing any uh, purchase, but he's just buying a Lufthansa ticket, and uh, he's just going to hopefully enter his credit card details. Yes, Harry? And I'm going to steal it while he's typing it. It's just an open area. You can just walk into people and start to steal information. So, as a result, what's happening? People are stealing your identity. Can you go back one slide? Again, this photo was taken in an airplane. The lady next to me, she was so nice. She, she trusted me so much. She left her wallet there. I didn't have to do anything. I mean, I can just steal the credit card, but no good. All I'd have to do is take photo, right? Because I don't need the physical card. I need the numbers. As a result, you will have your identity, your credit cards. I don't know if you noticed. There are still a bestseller. You will get passports. United States, Reise Pass, Deutschland. New Zealand, Australian, driver licenses. So this is uh, taken in an Australian Federal Police Office. Okay, I took this photo. And as a result, what's happening is your identity is getting sold. And I don't know if you know, sometimes your identity is much more important than anything else. Happened to my cousin. They still, <coughs> excuse me. They still uh, her bag from her car, okay? What happened is she started she, she done the right thing. She went to the police officer. She canceled all credit cards, the banks, this and that. But three weeks later, she started to receive VIP uh, invitations for gambling. She lives in Bakersfield. It's very close to, um, to Las Vegas. She started to receive invitation as VIP for gambling. She's not a person who gambles. Three months later, she started to receive bills. Again, right after, she started to receive court orders for not pay, court order for not paying the bills. As a result, she had to go back to police, back to courts. Yes, she done everything right, but someone steal her identity and acted as her. As a result, she was in trouble. Yes, 
She proved that it wasn't her, but it took lots of time. She had to go to post office to fax documents. She had to go to police again, again, and again. So what if she didn't go to the police? Probably she would have a hard time Much to prove that time, it was right? not her that was uh, doing all this stuff. All right. This is, again, me walking around uh, as I done a few seconds ago. This is a screen. This gentleman here, as you see, MCT Summit at Stockholm, one of the speakers. Uh, he was sleeping, as a proof. I just done that. <laughs> uh, you know, sometimes it's not your data, it's yourself. You will be, is that gentleman here? Good, he's not. <laughs> I I, not. I'm not going to tell his name. Uh, <laughs> but I asked him to come to the session. Uh, thanks God he didn't. <laughs> All right. This is in an Apple shop, me again. Please, what is wrong in this? I have nothing against Mac, OK? But what is wrong here? A Mac doesn't get PC virus secure. Do you think it's right? What is it? Do you see any difference between this and that? <laughs> do you? Now we're starting with the. Okay, it's enough talk. Let's start some real demo session, okay? Uh, it's time to take action. So I wanted to build up the scenario. Now we got the scenario ready. It's time to mute your computer because I don't want to talk here with the slides, okay? I just put some slides to build the scenario. Now, the scenario is uh, you got a virus in your system. Raymond was keen enough to get uh, infected. To, can you please start the demo? It's enough <laughs> slides, right? Enough slides. Let's get the right. Yes. Is, is it? No, it's not. Is it now? Yes, it, it is. Okay. You got a beautiful evil virus called me. Well, Erdo. let's check my system. Um, we didn't take the time to find a real life virus because viruses currently have kind of a short life cycle. So we had some help from some friends, and they, they created this uh, Erdo virus. Let's see if I can zoom in. And Erdl, the Erdl virus, it's, it's the kind of malware that you get recently. You will hardly notice it's there. It will not eat all your CPU resources. It will not take away everything on your network. It will not delete your data. Because most of the time, those people that try to hack your systems, they want to make sure that you will not notice. And they want to be there to steal everything you do for as long as possible. And this specific virus will not also get detected by your uh, usual antivirus as well, OK? Uh, this virus has been written by Hussain and Marcus Murray. They are at the moment in a different session. They were keen enough to write me a special virus. And Raymond? Well, what it does now, it's kind of waiting for commands. So. The, the thing is, you, you could get it in any way. There, there are so many ways to get this. Let's see. How can I get back? OK. There are so many ways to get a virus. It's just you being not paying attention for just that single moment that you fill out your password in the wrong website, that you download something without checking the correct source. You just Googled for, oh, actually, I didn't Bing. say that. Bing. I banged for security software somewhere. And I binged to the wrong location. Or, or even better, let's be honest. Who did never ever download an MP3 or a movie or a book? Oh my god, everybody's putting their <laughs> hands up. Like, oh, no one will tell you. <laughs> so we all done this at least once, OK? So let's, let's move on with the real stuff. I'm sick of the slides. I okay. want to show some hardcore stuff. Well, be, be, before we start showing the hardcore stuff, first thing is first. We have to find out what's going on on our system. So if you think something is going wrong on your system, start creating a timeline. Start freezing the information if you are able to. Yesterday, there was a, a security session of Marcus uh, Murray and uh, Hussein and Paula. Who was there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A few people were there. They, they, they were showing how you can freeze your volatile information by creating a memory dump and use a tool called vol volatility. To, to analyze what's in there. That's, that's the way to do it. Because everything that's happening on your system is there in memory. If you are able 
to track it down, you will find what's going on, what's going wrong, and what things are happening that are not supposed to be there. So you start creating a snapshot of what's going on. Create your timeline, find out who are the users on your system, what are the open files on your system, what network connections are going on, what processes are running there on your system. Just make sure that you, you have a baseline, and then you can find out what's going on. And you start finding your baseline at the command prompt. Usually, make sure you are an administrator. If you're not an administrator yet, probably, I hope you're not, because you're running with user account control, make sure that you start the command prompt as an administrator, and then start your, uh, your, your investigation. So the first thing you do. All right, the, we're going to switch to demo environment instead of uh, going through red button. So first, you have to know what, which date and which time you are. Because if you are part of a bot, then usually they will connect you in their own timeline. If they want to attack a server, they're going to use their timeline. And the first step is usually is to check the date and time. Uh, Let me make sure that you can read what I'm doing. Yeah, big <laughs> enough. Can everybody see it? So instead of just typing a basic date and time, what you're going to do is go to this Windows directory, type the date and time, and to see which date and timeline you are. That's for forensic purposes, OK? If you're doing a forensic, we are, which we're not going to cover today, you should record every single step. Otherwise, you will fail in the court. All your evidence is going to be uh, unlegitimate. So first step, check the time if, if you are under your own time zone. Second step is going to be to check the net statistic, how many sessions you got open, how, uh, what kinds of permissions has been violated, if there is any password validations, if there is any security files being accessed. Look, a basic net statistic server command will show uh, out of box. Uh, at the moment, we got a virus in, OK? And I'm going to show you how you can find the virus without paying a single cent. Basic net statistics command will show how many sessions has been accepted by your computer, how many sessions has timed out, sessions error out, kilobyte sent, password issues. You don't have to uh, type all this. It's going to be all for you as a PowerPoint, OK? I'm just going to quickly switch to so. I have this for you because we're going to do just demo. I get all the sessions for you, OK? Um, all the commands for you in the PowerPoint. So don't spend your time with ty typing it down. Just watch the recording and download the slides later. Back to the. Now, second step is to see who is logged into your computers. Why? Because most of the times, hackers are going to put some hidden user accounts in your, your systems. Hackers have five steps. It is like. We are in Madrid. I think most of you went to clubs already, right? Uh, what happens in a club? When you go to a club, music steps. You scan, you know, you scan the girls. You look at the girls, right? Uh, do you get any ladies? Then you find that lady that you like. Oh, she is nice. This is the scanning part. Now, uh, you want to gain access to this lady. Then say, hi, you know, you look, can we, can we meet? You try to get her attention. Hi, my name is Odell. What's your name? Jessica? Oh, nice to meet you, Jessica. That's the second step, which is gaining access. But you don't want to just be the normal person. You want to have some friendship with her, right? You want to have uh, some friendship with her. You want to uh, evaluate your privileges. <laughs> yeah. And this is gaining access. Getting special access. So you have to gain access to be able to kiss her or dance with her. Or for you, ma'am, it's opposite. OK, sorry. So what's going to happen is the fourth step is now uh, cleaning tracks. Because hey, I'm married. I hope my wife is not listening to this session. I'm married, and I don't want to get in trouble with my wife. What's going to happen is I have to clean my track. So hackers follow these usual tracks. What happens is this, at the moment, shows me uh, Jessica. I scanned her. I noticed she's not uh, dancing with anybody. I looked at her eyes. She looked at me. You know, 
I notice that nobody else is around her, so I can get some access. Hackers do the same. What is next? Well, let's see uh, what we can find out. There, cu currently, there is no extra user created on my system, so we, c we can move on and check if there is any unwanted session going on from external to my computer. Well, currently, I seem to be quite fine, so there is but something going on. But what you can do is, once you type this in, if something is going on, you will see that any IP address is connected to your computers, the username, the client type, and the connection type, uh, time. Why well, basic that session command? It's free. So if it's not an outside source connecting to my computer, then probably something is going on from inside my computer. And there are actually two ways to, to find out. You can use uh, the built-in command, netstat. Netstat, it has a shipload of extra options available to, to find out uh, what's going on uh, on, uh, on, uh, on the network, going outside or coming in. If your system is waiting for inbound traffic, you can find out your routing tables and find your network statistics. So for instance, you can use the command that I usually use the most when I use netstat is the dash an command. And it tells me if my system is currently listening on certain ports and if something is going wrong in t uh, from the outside going in. So well, <coughs> you see the protocol, you see the local IP address, and you see the address that it's connecting, the foreign IP address. And you will also see the states if it's listening. Hey, 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 look here. What is this? Can you please highlight it for me? Yes. There is something going I on. I see something from going on. His local IP address on a port 9999. It is sending sync packages. I don't know if you know TCP IP has a sync packet, thing packet, uh, reset packet, urgent packets. This is a TCP uh, IP details. I'm not going to cover this here, OK? But you can go to my blog or to Raymond's blog. We have a couple of stuff there already. So hmm, there's something going on in my system. It's sending an IP, it's, it's trying to connect to 192.168, whatever, and port 9999. OK, let's dig in more. Now let's try the dash E. Dash E will tell me if there are things going on on my network. So I can see these counters and see if something's going on, going out or coming into my system. I don't know if you noticed, a few minutes ago, there was everything was zero, 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 zero. Now, he started to send some, pa his computer started to send packets out and it started to receive some packets. Also, um, there are some kind of unicast packets, non-unicast packets that's going on. Again, at the moment, I didn't use an antivirus because most of the time, once you get infected, your antivirus system is going to be disabled, right? And you can't go to semantech.com or microsoft.security.com website because it's going to block it. Raymond? Yes. Then you can keep on moving with Netstat, for instance, with the dash S. Oh. And it will give you even more information. Look at this. Now I can see even more details about TCP IP version 4, version 6, ICMP statistics. And so basically, free tools from Netstat. It is giving me enough full power. I thought it's going to be good, Eddie, right? You happy so far? Yeah. Uh, ICMP statistics. Uh, my computer is start to send some packets out and receive packets. And there are some ports which is open, and there are some data graphs sent. Hmm, let's dig in more. Let's use NetSet B. Let's see what's going to happen now. It's going to take some time to load. You will see that, hey, there is only one connection open. And TCP, port TCP, it is, sending an, it is sending some information out via sync. All right. So what else can we do? Let's get some verbose information about this. Dash VB. VB? Oh. What is this doing? It's gonna, not going to tell you more. Probably it's, it's currently not trying to do anything on the network. The process is gone. Let's try it again. Ah, here we go. Something is going on. 
it is now still showing that uh, something is going on in the system. Yep. So, actually, we try to keep track of what's going on. Now, let's move to my keyboard. And I hope this message is disappearing from my screen. NAO. Okay, what is NAO doing? <coughs> now, I got the protocol, the IP address, the foreign IP address, the state, and the process ID. Why it's important to know the process ID? Because now we want to stop that stupid process which is running, which is sending information out. I know something is running in port 9999, but I don't know what is the process name. Raymond, what can I do? How can I get more information about this? Well, I just noticed that I had to do <coughs> this command two times. The first time there was nothing going on. The second time there was a process with process ID 200. Probably if I do this again, it will show me a different process ID. Currently it is process ID 2096. Ah, this virus is smart. It is keep changing the processes. So what I'm gonna do is, now as I know that there is a change going on, I'm gonna concentrate only in, I wanna see the changes like every one second. Can you, uh, uh, before you go to find, can you delete it? Just NOI1, please. Okay, like this. Yeah, uh, what happened, it's refreshing every one second. I'll make it NOI5, probably it's better. It's too fast. <laughs> <laughs> you can't keep track of this. Let's try this. Now it's gonna refresh the screen every five seconds, but you got dozens of things going on. You don't want this to happen. You want to concentrate on that 9999. So how can I do that, Raymond? Well, uh, pipe that to a find command. Let's try it like this. Pipeline. Find 999. Let's see what happens. Now it's gonna concentrate on only this port, and it's gonna refresh every five seconds. So as you can see, there's definitely something going on on 3464. The process ID is that. And it keeps sending every five seconds. So it's, there is an active connection at the moment. Well, there is a different tool that you can use to find things out like this. This, this is built in. This is Netstat. It's built in Windows. You don't have to download anything. But if you are able to download, there's one thing you should download. There is uh, this tool set from SysInternals that I has all right. kinds of tools in there. And they have kind of the Netstat on steroids tool there. It's called TCP View. Let's see. I have it here. Break it down and start TCP View. Almost. There is. Agree? No, I agree. Sure. And this is the nice graphical interface. If you don't like to type it, what you can do is you can just use the free tool for Mark Rosinovich. And download it. But first of all, you, you notice here that sometimes you will notice red lines and green lines in the interface. Red line is a dying process, a green line is a new upcoming process. But it stays on only very short. So probably first thing you want to do is make sure that you have some more time to find out what's going on by using this option, update speed, and change the update speed to, uh, to a lower frequency like... Exactly what I done at NAO, one, we changed it to five, remember? This is now in the graphical interface. So now I turn this into five seconds. And I will notice that sometimes something happens. There is some Zoom process in. going on here on port 999. Right at the top. Right at the top. And I should change this because now I'm missing all the news going on. And it's dying out. I don't know if you notice, red. It's going red. And it's disappearing again. So we get a view of what's going on. Probably there will be some activity going on now, I hope where new processes are coming and old processes are leaving. And this Carefully. gives us the time to focus on those processes and see what's going on with these processes. So That's TCP view will give you everything that Netstat has, only in a simpler view with a GUI. So then we have this unusual port. Okay, now we know that port number is there. Okay, 
Uh, this is a different demo. I use, like, you know what's going on. Port 44499, and it doesn't matter what it is. You can use, uh, we call it Google hacking, okay? Uh, or we can change it to Bing hacking. Basically, being able to search what you need. So if you go to semantic.com, the antivirus is gonna block it. What you can do is you can go to your favorite search engine, such as Bing, okay? Uh, type site, colon, semantic.com, TCP port 4444. Enter, and it will tell you straight away, hey, it is a W32 blaster worm. So without using an antivirus, with just using two or three steps, I mean, we showed you many stuff, but you need only to use two or three to be able to find with what you are infected. So probably whatever infected you is making sure that it can get back whenever you restart your system. So the most easy way to find out is by using msconfig in Windows Vista or Windows 7, and it will actually tell you which uh, applications are there in the startup. But that, that's the easy way to find out what's going on. This functionality, is, it's, it's actually, it's, it's gone away in Windows 8. In Windows 8, there is the task manager, and task manager will tell you what programs are starting up with Windows. But it's only summing up a single location in the registry where you can add programs to your registry to, uh, to start with your system. There is this tool on system terminals called Autoruns. And what Autoruns is doing, it finds every single location that can be used by malware to start up with the startup of your system. So it's not just this run or run once key in, in your registry. No, there are multiple locations. And that's the nice thing about other runs. Let's see what our virus is doing. I have my malware and I have other runs. And if I agree, other runs will create a summary. And there is always some interesting information to, to get from, from, from this because at first you see a lot of services and programs starting with your system. Try to focus on what's Microsoft and what's not Microsoft. There is an option in there that, that, you, can, that you can use to filter or you can just watch for this publisher column and the publisher column will tell you where the executable is coming from. So those executables are from Microsoft but here something strange is going on. If Zoomit is working with me, I found this one. It seems to come from an unknown source. And it is something that's starting up from my app data folder in my users. Now let's see what's going on there. Like this. Can I see? And now we notice that there is some executable called server.exe that's starting with my system. I didn't put it there. I don't know what server.exe is. So I can find out if this I thing is valid. But before I start that, I can start finding out what this process is actually doing, where it's coming from, and I can use Process Explorer, which is also a tool from um, Sys Internals. Process Explorer. Here it is. And Process Explorer can provide you with a lot of information. Um, first of all, I always change a few things when I uh, start using Process Explorer because just like TCP view, it will show you the changes in processes very shortly. So you can change this thing called the difference highlight duration to make sure that if something changes in a process that you have enough time to start focusing on it. So that's change the process, the difference highlight duration from one second to nine seconds. And if my virus is still active, I should see something happening very shortly. And if something happens, I can wait for it to change again, or I can uh, press the, the space, space bar, and the space bar will make sure that everything that's happening currently, it's, it, it freezes in the user interface so I can start exploring what's going on. Well, let's see if something's going to happen because my virus is currently not doing anything anymore. It will do something shortly. 
Just move on. <laughs> I'll trust you. Well, in the meantime, there are a few other programs that you can use, except from Process Explorer. Uh, first of all, there is this built-in utility called Task List. And Task List will just show you the processes that are going on. Something is going on here, but it's not what I expected. It's a WMI provider host. That will ah, not okay. help me. Now, Just before the task list again. Yeah. Task list will show me some new processes that are going on. I see a list of services and processes, but it's not server.exe. So probably now nothing really strange is going on. We have to wait for that. Oh, uh, yeah, I yeah, see yeah, something yeah. happening. So. I've just froze the system, freeze. And if I zoom in, you'll notice that server.exe is doing something. Mm. It's starting several processes is for Explorer. Explorer.exe, isn't it safe? Explorer? Explorer seems to be safe, but they are spawned by server.exe. All right, can we double check? How can we double check if it's a valid application or not? Yes, let's zoom in. Uh-oh. What's happening? You closed that. No, no, I didn't. Did I? Yes, you did. How did I do that? Okay. Let's restart Process Explorer. Sorry. And then we have to wait for it, it to appear again. And while we wait, I'll show you different ways to show what processes are running on your system until my virus becomes active again. Um, I always promote PowerShell. And PowerShell has some very uh, nice features. Let's start PowerShell as an administrator, just as we did with the command prompt. Very quick note, you can run all these net set commands or all the commands that you had with PowerShell as well, okay? So just <laughs> quick note for, okay. for maybe for someone who doesn't know. I was sharp, and in the meantime, I uh, made sure that I had- Right click properties. The ah, properties, so I write the properties of the explorer.exe, and now you should notice that it's not just explorer.exe that is starting, it's starting explorer.exe from syswow664, but nothing strange here. It's just starting the, the Microsoft Corporation Explorer, which it says here. It's in Explorer from Microsoft, and I can verify the source by press clicking verify here, and ah, it says, it's well, a it's real one. the real Windows Explorer. Still, it started by an executable, let's cancel this one, that's called server.exe. And server.exe, this one is suspected. You see, it started from app data roaming installer server.exe. This, probably it's the most popular location for malware developers currently to store their software because every piece of malware that I find recently is there. And it's, it's not from a, a, from a trusted source. How can you know that? Click and verify again? I can verify it. Oh, sorry. No signature. It says no signature is present. So <coughs> you can also use PowerShell to do investigations like this. Well, let's first make sure that you are kind of able to read what I'm doing. Because PowerShell has this command that says get process. And get process will show you kind of the same list that you've seen earlier. But, process, but PowerShell has some nice options that can help you to do the investigation by, for instance, sending the output to something else. And now I will use the grid view to send the output to. And now I get this. And this is a graphical user interface. It's PowerShell still. And this graphical user interface allows me to add filtering. So. If I want to make sure that I am looking for a process with a large number of handles, I can, I can use the filter to say, well, if this process has more than, let's say, 500 file handles, then I, can, uh, then, then I want to, to view it in my list. So is greater than or equal to 500? And then I will only get the list of processes that have a larger number of handles running. This is one way that, 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 that PowerShell will help you. If you are not running a PowerShell script to create the output, you will just get clean text. 
And even with clean text, you can use the outgrid view to filter on the text to find out what's going on. Okay. Now back to task list. Back to task list. So what was? I think you did something wrong. Huh? Okay. There it is. There it is. So task list, it will view your stuff about processes that are running, but it also shows you if any new processes are running to make sure that you have the, the complete investigation going on. So while just typing task list, as we see, you will see the process which is running with the process ID, and this time with a description of the services. And if you have a, most of the malware developers, they're lazy. They will not put some description in. This will be maybe a different way for you to identify what's going on in the system. Yes, and, and especially for, for, for this list. This list, it contains a number of SV host uh, services running there. SVC host is one of those services that we, most of the time, we don't know what, what it's doing. We don't know what it's hiding, and it's a perfect way for malware to hide their tracks. They are hiding as a part of svchost.exe. You have no idea what's going on. So this tasklist.svc will help you, slash svc will help you to, to, to locate this specific service. And while just typing tasklist we, uh, we comment, you will also now see the memory, the CP usage, the statistic. So it will also help you to dig in more on your suspected file, task, service. So remember, uh, we showed also a few seconds ago some uh, net user commands. So to see, to show you who was logged in. What is your domain? I'm not sure, but. Okay. It, it reminds me of your discotheque story where you are trying to, uh, to make an impression to this girl and make sure that you have a user account to get in. Okay. <laughs> the best way is, you know, to see if someone is married or not, usually you check the ring, isn't it? It will give you an indication. Net users will tell all the user accounts in the PC. And you can, you don't want just to know the PC, you, the user accounts. You want to see who got the admin rights, who got the power to change stuff in your computer. All what you have to do is net local group administrators, and it will show all the admin groups in your PC. And hey, what is this going? What is this envy there? Mm, something to take your attention. Who is this envy user? Who is this going user? So let's see if our virus did something like this on our system. Um, let me red button first. Only the red button. Nope. Yes. Let's see if it created a new user, net user. And Currently, there are no new users on my system, so Which is good. this is good. I should be fine. Now let's find out if something else is going on here. Let's see if someone is connecting to my session to my system. I can use um, this tool from Sys Internals again, log on sessions, and it will tell me if any one or any user is connected to my system from the outside or using some special account. Well, currently there is a lot going on on my system and I'm not sure if this is related to my virus. Can you tell, Erdol? We will tell this shortly. So uh, it's, this is just another small example to show you what's going on in your system. And if you look carefully, uh, there are some services going on with anonymous users, so it's going to be our job to dig in more. So maybe there is another tool which can use the DLLs. Let's see which DLLs are running in our system, Let's right? Let's check if I can find the DLLs. Um, there is this tool also from Sys Internals. It says list, list DLLs.exe. And list DLLs, it will show you the DLLs that are loaded in memory. Whoa. Uh, just a small example. <laughs> it will show all these DLLs running in the system, and again, it will give you some sort of help. Remember, we use Task Manager or uh, Process Explorer 
we found the DLL. This is just let another way for you to dig in into the system. What else can we do? So before we kill the virus, I want to show you, we want to show you what else helps you to get more information. We got some other tools such as how can we see if there is any open file in your system? Well, there is this open files feature in Windows. Uh, you didn't turn it on, did you? Um, now let's see if I turn it on. No, oh, it's not turn it on. Uh, let's see. It tells me. Hold on. I move it to here. Okay. Uh, you, you talk. It tells me that I have to enable this feature to find out what files are open. And um, I can enable this feature and leave it on, but if I leave it on, it, there will be a performance penalty. So you should only turn this feature on if you are researching something suspect expected. And of course, rebooting the system may kill what you're looking for. So be careful before you start doing this. If you are running out of options, then you start turning on the open files feature. And when you're finished, you can turn it, you should turn it off again because otherwise well, your systems will be slower because of turning on the open files feature. If it works, this will be your output. It will tell you of every executable on your system what files are opened. So that you have kind of a grasp of what's going on and what your virus or malware is doing on your system. So if you're part of a bot, the hacker will control you via the bot system, right? And you should have some files open in your system, either to steal, either to control, God knows for what. This will help you to identify what has been shared in your computer. Or this might be a server, and you are suspicious of a, a parametrical activity, like in that movie. You can just type this command to see what kinds of activities going on in the system. Exactly. So just never forget to turn it off when you're finished uh, exploring these open files. Then there is the net file command to find out if anyone is connecting to any share on your system. Make sure that there is no suspected uh, traffic going on. And then there is this PS file command it, from PS from Process Explorer, which, which kind of does the same thing, but it's, it gives you even more information. So <coughs> even then, there are more tools like uh, WMIC, which is the manage, uh, Windows Management Instrumentation command line. It's not, it's 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 a single world. It's a world in itself. The WMIC allows you to do a lot of more, more of in investigation, get into the internals of Windows, for instance, to find out what processes are going on on your system. It will tell you what's going on. Let's see, like this. Clean the screen. What yeah, processes are running? So let's clean the screen and run WMMIC process, oh, process list. Oh my god. Okay. I'm going to get some information from here. It's a bit complicated, OK? I want to see all the processes which is running my computer. Do you mind putting it in order for me, please? Yes, I will. How? Why, well, just adding the? Brief. Brief command at the end. And let's see what comes out. OK, ah, this looks more readable. I got it nice and tidy. And all right, I know the port 999 is going on, OK? And we had the process ID, which I forgot anyway. This will show again what's going on in your system. And we can just scroll through to see if there is any suspicious activity. And in this case, yes, this you can help me to find that suspicious activity. Server.exe, mm, what is that? I'm not in a server. And it has the process ID is 126, server.exe. And it is, you can see the priority, the process ID, the thread count. And the uh, working set size. Mm. So some numbers are going on there. Uh, let, me, uh, let me see if this WMI process is getting some other information out of my computer. What I can do is I can use WMIC to run the process list in a full. So I want to see everything in that PC. How can I do that, Raymond? Well, let's try it like this, because I, I'm afraid I will get a lot of information too much. Uh, um, what you're doing here is basically, you talk. Well, it tells me every, each and every single thing there is to know about the process. 
but it will tell me this about every process. And because I have a kind of number of processes running here, it will take some time to find the right process if the process is even still running. So while well, I just type in the more command, we just pause the, pause the command, and we're just loading step by step to see what's going on. And I think server.exe, we're going to see it shortly. We're going to browse through, and as soon as we found it, I'm not sure if we're going to find it. We will find it sometime, somewhere. Just mm. for the sake of demo, just stop somewhere. Uh, it will basically show you uh, the defaults, what's, what's, how it's using your system resources. OK, let's say this is the process that you use suspicious. OK. Auto rinse. Now it's <laughs> Marcus, <laughs> no, which is not in the room, right? Good. Uh, let's say this is the process. What can we do? Let's go to. Sys internals, process explorer. Now we got the virus, right? We know what we we know what we uh, are after. But before we do, let's let's have one more comment. Did you type this? The more comment. Okay, Stop. let's find so, some more. Before we go to the very next step, most of the viruses they like to hide themselves in the startup. Why? Because this way they will. Uh, pop up. Yes, we showed you some tool which is called Auto Run Startup. Task Manager will show you that, but is there anything else which I can run, Raymond? Well, yes, there is this command WMIC Startup List. And Startup List will show you the, pro the, the programs that are added to, uh, to the, startup. the startup key. And in this case, if Zoomit is keeping on my yeah, system, I will notice that there is something going on here. Server.exe uh, is in the startup. Yes. And while just typing a f command out of box, I can see where this virus is hiding, the exact location. So let's see if we can find the executable. Um, let's get it here and type cd c users end user. App data roaming install there. It's here, and it's not even hidden. So yeah, smart viruses they hide themselves, but my, uh, you know our friends that make it easy for us, they just okay move on. So I can just delete this one, and it should be gone. Let's try it. Stop. Most of the time, delete is the last thing which you should do. Why? Because viruses, they have clusters. As soon as you delete them, it will create a new one. You don't want this to happen. Because you delete it, it will, a smart virus, a polymorphic virus will create itself again. So deleting will not work with smart viruses. So this was a smart virus. It, I did delete it, and here it is. What happened? It's back. Oh, that's Marcus and Hassan for you. <laughs> so it just came back. Delete doesn't help. What can I do? Probably we have to freeze the system and then delete it. Okay, try. How can we do that? Well, maybe. Ah, uh, now out of box is out of option. You need some tools. It's like you might be the best brain surgeon in the world, okay? But if I get a brain issue here, you need your tools to do the operations. And Let's use something free, Process Explorer. Let's see if there is something strange going on here that I can find to stop. Do you know how we can stop this virus? Yeah, right click. Where is it? Server.exe is not running, but probably it's hiding. With uh, it will come shortly again. So let's say this is the file, OK? I would highly recommend you to suspend the virus, OK? Why? This way, you will pause it, and then you can just go and delete it. Why? Now, as it's been suspended, you, can, you have the power to work with it. You have the power to deal with it. Again, I'm going to cool. leave this part for Mark Rosanovich's session. Please go watch uh, License to Kill session, and he will move from here on. OK? Uh, so his session is going to show you how you can suspend and remove the virus. What I was trying to show you is because this is a level 200 session, 
how you, so basically we gave you all the tools to find the virus, to suspend the virus, and deleting from here is quite easy. You're going to suspend it and then deal with it. But uh, before we move on, uh, it's, I think we should also be aware of some other tools. Do we got any question before you, we move on? Any question? Yes, sir. Uh, the question is, are the viruses, uh, sorry? Yeah, and, uh, are, are, some viruses that, uh, hide are there viruses that can hide themselves? Uh, the yes, actually we, we, we will move into that part uh, later in the session. But, but let me answer it straight away. The answer is yes. <laughs> Flax virus, uh, Stanex virus, it hides itself for four years. Nobody could detect it. And when it was detected, it was too late. The bot centers disappeared one by one. After four years, like a good example which I give is Iran. If you think, look at the history. Iran was always so powerful, even Ottoman Empire. They, you know, they came all the way to Europe, Africa, Asia, but not Iran. If you look at America, they're everywhere, but not Iran. But a smart guy wrote a little virus, and this virus went straight in for four years to their nuclear center and send information out. As a result, Iran decided to write their own operating system and their own network. So, of course, but we call this zero days. I mean, if we knew zero days, I wouldn't hear presenting. I would just sell it to Symantec and make millions, uh, you know what I mean? Yes, the answer is yes. Any other question? Yes, sir. The, the question is, rather than uh, uh, suspending the process, what about going to uh, safe mode? The answer is definitely yes. Um, that's with the rootkits. We're going to show it shortly again. Okay, we have some tips for this as well. If it's a rootkit, doesn't matter what you did, it's going to come back. It's going to control your operating system. And Windows 8 has some cool features to prevent this as well, okay, uh, which we're going to talk towards the end. Okay? Any other question from the back? No questions? Okay. Well, let's then move on. Okay. Being aware of social engineering, there is just no patch for human stupidity. I always say the weakest part of your IT security is there between your keyboard and the chair. You can pick up the phone, give anyone access to your system, and you're gone. So. Whatever we do, there will be always someone behind the keyboard that may harm your systems in any way else. So, is there anything else we can do? You can create a sheep deep computer. I mean, yes, if you want to really download that funny stuff, go on and create a computer, a virtual image. I mean, most of you have now Windows 8, okay? The Hyper-V is free. If not, use virtual PC. Oracle Virtual Box or whatever software you use. Have a sheep tip computer which you monitor. That's what I do. If you go to my blog, you will see many viruses, how you fight with them, how you uh, remove them. Again, this is a 200 level session. That's why we didn't go too deep on that. But create something which you keep under control and see what's going on in your system. You can run device manager to see the driver files, the registry, the changes. Also, uh, you know, it's a good idea to protect that system from your actual, you know, if it's a virtual machine, make sure it doesn't connect to your actual host because you don't want your viruses to be shared. Be aware, there are smart viruses. They are smart enough to detect if you are running in a, a virtual environment or not. So there is always smarter people than than us. So it is a battle, a chess game. Uh, you have to always think about the next activity. And that's what I was trying to say at the beginning. This session was designed to wake you up. Now you should wear glasses, a glasses with your security professional uh, uh, vision. Why? You should know that there is some stuff going on 
and this stuff can be detected while just uh, taking a step back and looking more carefully. Uh, once you find something and you notice that file is not, uh, you know, you, you have not much information, just upload it to, to, to where? To, <laughs> well, uh, it's not in the slide. You I can guess you're being it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, you can just go to that website and get more information, or there are some tools, which hopefully it's going to be in the next slide, okay, which you can upload it, and this will do a free analysis for you. And it will show, like in my uh, reverse engineering classes, I show my students how to write a virus, and I ask them to upload to that website, and it will scan it for them. And it will tell that which antivirus will detect it, and which antivirus won't detect it. Rootkits, what can we do for rootkits, Raymond? Well, this is the question that uh, someone was asking for the, from the audience. Well, some of these files try to hide themselves. And it can be quite simple by using one of the options that, that there are in the file system. You just use the slash, slash h to, get, to create a hidden file or, or something else. And there are ways to get around it by using a dir slash s slash b or slash h a to make sure that you, you are showing all the hidden files on your operating systems. Sometimes that is not enough because this virus or piece of malware might be using a rootkit. And what a rootkit is doing, it actually um, changes your file system driver in such a way that certain parts of your file system, system will always be hidden. So you will not be able to see this directory where the malware is hiding. The way to get around that is by booting the system from a different OS. I usually use Dart from, uh, from the MDOP toolkit. It has a few other very nice tools in there. But if you use, for instance, WinPE to boot, it will circumvent your, uh, your rootkit, and it will be able to show all the files on your system. And if you then create files from the output and, and, and find the differences, you will notice that your online system will have different output from the files on your system than if you're running from a different operating system. And that will, might be a sign that something is hiding files from, your, from you so that you cannot remove the, those malware files from your system. Rootkits are like a bad example, like AIDS. You won't know if you got AIDS for six, seven years, okay? Then it will start to kill your, uh, I forgot the term, it will start to kill your power to fight with the virus. Rootkits are hidden, okay? They are designed to control the operating system. And the best way to fight against rootkit is to attack it offline, as Raymond said, okay? And uh, you can use whatever tool uh, to dig in, but taking offline is the best recommendation. So, if you have a virus, make sure you have a plan how to remove it. Just deleting the executable, just like I just tried, might not help. So, sometimes it's good to do it from a different system. Sometimes you might need some help from some other malware, anti-malware, anti uh, probably anti-malware vendor that will create software for you to remove, to remove the software from your uh, system or at least block every entry to... Uh, your malware so that you can safely remove it from your systems. There are all sorts of anti-malware, anti-trojan software. I usually refer to Dart, as I told you. It has a nice anti-malware feature where you can update the antivirus signatures and then run it offline on the system to remove all the viruses from your computer. So, a virus can be detected if you're lucky, but currently it's so easy to create a new virus that just scanning a virus using known signatures, well, it will detect part of your viruses, part of the viruses that are around in the wild, but it will not detect them all. So make sure that you have different ways to find out what's going on. So scanning, just scanning is never enough. You have to do the integrity checks. You have to find, you have to, to, to use some software that's doing the interception and make sure that it finds what's going on, what's not normal on your system, and the traffic that's going on that you don't want there.
want to be there. So probably. All right. Uh, I'll quickly switch to. Can you please uh, show us if you got Windows Defender enabled? Let me see. I did check it. Yes. Remember, he just clicked during the beginning. He installed the virus called URL, and Windows Defender did not detect it. Please scan it. You will see that it's not going to detect it. And I did try this virus with any antivirus you can think about. It's not detecting it. So not having, as I, as I was trying to say, having just antivirus, it will not guarantee you you're going to be safe. Having a firewall is not going to guarantee you you're going to be safe. Having an uh, up-to-date system is not going to guarantee you to be safe. Remember the golden rule at the beginning? So you have to be always aware. And, and it is important to know that. Once you know that a virus can hit you, doesn't matter how much you protect yourself, then you can start to get safer. Doesn't matter how good driver you are, um, Ivan, doesn't matter how good driver you are, you are only good as the driver which is opposite to you. As soon as he hits you, you have no chance. Isn't it true? So being a security professional is not different to this. So what Microsoft is currently doing, it's adding a lot of new features in Windows to make sure that Windows is secure out of the box. For instance, Windows 8, it has Windows Defender. It's the antivirus software, it's built in. You don't have to add any uh, antivirus software. And there's much more going on in, in Windows 8, like uh, measurements to take care of, the, of root kits, uh, like measured boot. Um, secure boot. Secure boot. Um, Windows 8.1, which is coming now, it will, it, it will en enable your BitLocker security by default, just to make sure that you're not infected. And, and as this graph shows, it shows what's happening to systems, even if you don't protect them, on different operating systems. So as you see, from Windows 7 to Windows 8, the number of infected systems that are not protected, it, it, it drops. If, even if you don't protect Windows 8, the chances that you are infected by some kind of malware are much, much, much smaller, especially compared to Vista or Windows XP. And if you start doing extra protection, well, then the chances that you are being hit are even being smaller. But still, it's the person behind the keyboard that may be your vulnerability. It's your biggest vulnerability. Technically, everything is being done. I've done it so many times. Call a company uh, pretending to be someone and force the person on the phone to give you the information that you need. And it's much easier than you think. Uh, you will go to YouTube, please. You will see people going to Pizza Hut and getting free pizzas while using the social engineering skills. Um, there are many, much more examples, but as I said, we did try to keep the scope uh, on what you can do when you get infected. We did try to show you many different ways, which is out of box ready for you. So I don't want to hear any more excuse. Oh, we don't have the money. Oh, I don't have the tools. So you got everything right behind, under your finger, fingerprints. It's up to you to go and look into these. So I got many stuff in my blog, yourmct.com, your Microsoft Certified Trainer, mct.com. Uh, also, my next expert, what was your blog? Nextexpert.com without the E in the middle. OK. So we have many stuff in our blogs as well. And please, this session was designed to show you what can be done and based on the level. I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, please go fill the evaluations. If not, don't worry. <laughs> no, just kidding. Please fill the evaluations. And we have, uh, I think, free giveaways. I, we got a couple of gifts for you. I got, if you're interested with Lord Balancer, please come and see me. I work for Lord Balancing Company, Camp. Come and see me. I got three to give away. And we got a couple of ebooks and um, training software to give away. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much.